Hello, my name is Gene Montristelli, and I am the editor of TappingQ&A.com, and the video that you are about to watch is an interview that I did as part of the 24 Hours of Tapping. The 24 Hours of Tapping was a free event, which was a fundraiser for the Peaceful Heart Network. The Peaceful Heart Network provides training and trauma relief tools to those in war-torn countries, as well as working with refugees all over the world. They've been able to help out over 200,000 people all over the world. After you watch this video, if you find this video something that was useful, the very easy way that you can say thank you to the guests for giving their time and sharing their expertise is to go to 24HoursOfTapping.com slash support and make a small contribution to support the Peaceful Heart Network. Again, that is 24HoursOfTapping.com slash support, and I hope you enjoy this conversation. with my friend, Carol Richard. Carol is a sleep coach, an emotional success coach, and a master conscious EFT practitioner. She helps sleep deprived individuals get the one thing holding them back from thriving in life, constant, refreshing, deep sleep without the need for medication or complicated bedtime rituals. Please welcome to the virtual stage, my friend, Carol. Hi, Carol, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Excellent. So I'm doing excellent. We're running on adrenaline and coffee and chocolate at this point <laughs> as we march our way through all of this, which is everything that is the antithesis about what we're supposed to talk about this evening. But the good news is I don't have to worry about it because I have no intention on sleeping this evening. So we don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking of that too. Like everything I would tell people not to do is what you're doing. That's absolutely right. But within two or three days, your sleep will be back. So you're okay. Awesome. That's good to hear. Um, so one of the things that I've been doing with a number of the folks is I've been asking people about their origin story around the topic that we're having the conversation about. And so I would love to hear in your words why you are interested in and connected to wanting to do something related to sleep. Um, and I've been thinking about that. Like I share my story openly um, because I didn't know anything about tapping what i knew six seven years ago was that my body lost the ability to sleep mm -hmm. totally lost the ability my brain wouldn't shut off i kept walking around saying if i could have an off switch for my brain maybe i would sleep and i found myself in a situation where i was taking two sleeping pills and maybe getting three hours a night and at my lowest point i lost all sensation in my hands and feet from lack of sleep and I had to stop working. And that was the hardest thing I ever did, you know, because I prided myself on being this amazing worker and a mom. And I volunteered with the youth program and all of a sudden I couldn't do anything. Yep. Um, so when I stopped working because I wasn't sleeping, I found um, the Hay House Summit where Nick Hortner talked about tapping. And I thought, well, I'm going to try it because by this time, once I once I stopped working, the funny thing that happened is I started having panic attacks. What I know now is my nervous system was trying to release this energy. What I didn't know then is what was happening. And I got really scared because I was like, what is happening to my body? And once I started tapping, within two weeks, I had no more, no more panic attacks. And then three weeks later, I fell asleep on my own on the couch. And then I just knew, like, wow, like I went years without sleep. And within three mm -hmm. weeks, I was sleeping again. So from then on, I just, I asked the universe if I'm supposed to do this with people, let me know, guide the way. And here I am now doing this for a living. And so as you, you know, in your bio, we talked about, you know, medication and, and sleep hygiene and all of that sort of stuff that we talk about. One of the things I always find really interesting before we talk about something that works is the tried and fails. So yeah. What are the things that you tried and failed? And now that you've spent a lot of time thinking and studying and researching all of this, um, I think it's I think it's not only good for us to normalize when things are not working, I think it becomes even more normalized when we're able to have a conversation about why those things aren't working. So what, yeah. what, what are the things that you found before we talk about what does work that <laughs> hasn't worked or, because I know you and I recently had a really interesting conversation about melatonin, which was a real eye opener for me. So I'd, I'd love to hear you know, just kind of share those, what you've learned about the, the conventional wisdom, and then we can talk about tapping and how that's useful as well. Perfect. Okay. So the first thing, um, and I laugh at myself now, all the things I was doing wrong that I believed mm -hmm. I was doing right. 
Yeah. Um, one of the things that I did was drink a lot of coffee because I was having such a hard day making it through the day that I thought if I just had coffee, um, I would be okay. But what people don't realize is that caffeine, the half life of caffeine stays in your brain for eight hours after you had that last cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. so when I was having coffee at four in the afternoon, trying to keep myself going, I was actually putting all the stimulant in my brain. So I wasn't sleeping because mm -hmm. of the stimulant and you can't tap caffeine out of your brain. You right. Know? right. Another thing that I did that um, really wasn't helping me is I was having a glass or two of wine every night because mm -hmm. I was thinking if I can just relax and calm down, then I'll be able to sleep. Well, alcohol blocks your REM sleep. So not only was I full of caffeine, then I was putting the alcohol and blocking my REM sleep. So no wonder even the sleeping pills didn't work. I did do medication because I didn't know better at the time mm -hmm. because there was no one educating on how else to go to sleep. Um, the other thing I tried that didn't work is I stopped doing my self-care. I stopped running. I stopped going out with friends because I thought if I just had more time to do the work I had to do to get through my to-do list, then I would be able to sleep. And so I took away everything that was good for me, thinking that I was going to help myself sleep better. And it mm -hmm. actually just did the opposite. Like I didn't sleep at all. Um, interesting about melatonin, because the conversation we had is like, melatonin doesn't actually help you sleep. It just tells your body that it's time to fall asleep. Okay. And so people are taking melatonin thinking that it actually will help the quality of their sleep. And it doesn't. In the book that I read, the guy um, explains it as it's like if you're going to start a race and you have the guy that has like the, the pistol that's going to say the race is ready to go. Yep. That's melatonin. But once gotcha. you start running, melatonin has nothing to do with the race. So, you know, melatonin has its place. But if you're highly stressed, melatonin is not going to help you. So some, so those are some of the things that I talk about with my clients too, because a lot of people will take melatonin, melatonin thinking it helps and it doesn't. And it, then it creates the belief, right? That I need my melatonin to sleep mm -hmm. and then it doesn't work anymore. So then they really think they're broken because they can't sleep. So they've created this negative belief now. So, yeah. So, okay. So with that being said, what are the things that we can do? How, what are the approaches? What are the things that we're thinking about when it comes to tapping that then becomes a useful thing that allows us to get better, not just more, but better quality yes. sleep. Yeah. Yeah. I think the first thing that people, um, that I teach people even before we get into the tapping is our nervous system because mm -hmm. an activated nervous system will not sleep, you know, because okay. constant state of fight or flight we're yeah. looking for danger and therefore our bed becomes this scary place and not this safe place. And, so and, and as you, as you say that I cannot think of, and I'm, I'm a typically a good sleeper and I'm a good traveler and I never miss, I've never missed a flight in my life for being late. And mm -hmm. I've never had a good night of sleep before an early morning flight. Right. You know, you want to miss it. That's right. So the, the, there's this, the, you know, and it's not the I'm going to be eaten alive by a big fuzzy thing with giant teeth, but there is this fear. Oh, no, this thing is going to go wrong and it's going to. And so my nervous system is just activated and I'm just kind of on edge and that's just going to be the reality of it. Right. And that happens. So imagine if you first don't have a good night's sleep because you don't want to miss your flight or you don't want to miss an important meeting mm -hmm. or you have a deadline tomorrow. And then that starts creating the belief that, oh, I can't sleep if I have an important day the next day. So you never right. sleep on those days. Say you had, and this happened to me recently, I had a difficult conversation before bed. My brain was totally activated, didn't go to sleep. Well, then the next night, that conversation, even though I was fine all day, came back at night. Right. Because I've just trained my brain that the bed is a place to worry and to yeah. think about things. And so then you have to start thinking, okay, do I get out of bed? Do I stay in bed? Um, I've done a lot of research on cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia, and they recommend getting out of bed. And I was like, I can get that because you don't want your brain to associate the bed with mm -hmm. a place of worry. So get out of bed, but then go do some tapping. So go right. sit on the couch then and actually say, I'm frustrated. I can't sleep. This sucks. I wish I could sleep. I have a big day tomorrow. I need to sleep. Just get that energy moving. So that then you can go back to bed and fall asleep because you're just your nervous system is activated. 
And, and I could see someone who is up in the middle of the night thinking to themselves, the last thing I want to do is be angry mm -hmm. and annoyed because angry and annoyed does not equal sleep. Exactly. But, you know, one of the one of the, the kind of presuppositions that I work from in my work is fully articulated emotions are short lived. Exactly. That I often think about an emotion like a little kid is in the back seat that's trying to get your attention going, hey, 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 <laughs> yes, windmill. Yes, it's a windmill. And they quite, they're like, they're just, they, they need to be heard. And once they're heard, it's done and they move on. And our emotions right. aren't a lot of different. And so if we're waking up in the middle of the night and we're frustrated, we're stuck with something like that. Like I could see how we're thinking we don't want to activate the emotion, but in this case, it's the opposite. You're saying lean into it, feel it, clear it because like the number of times that, you know, like just so far in, in the eight and a half hours that we've spent on this and the amount of tapping I've done and people are like, well, how do you feel? Like, oh, I just feel so much more expansion and so much more relaxed. Right. Like that right. is my first response is we've dealt with lots of things that are rattling around inside of my head. So of course that's the thing that's going to make us feel calmer. So right. as, as you say that you're saying, okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to downregulate the nervous system. So we're out of fight, flight or freeze. So for someone who is tapping on their own in, in the evening, is that something I do at 530? Is it something I do right before I get in bed? What does that actually yeah. look like when we're tapping in that way? It looks different for everybody because some people start tapping and it activates them and other people it calms them. So mm -hmm. depending on if you're if you're wanting to do some tapping to clear an issue, I wouldn't do that before bed. I do that in the morning. Gotcha. But if you're not able to sleep and you're activated, then I would add the tapping. Okay. I wouldn't bring up an issue before bed to tap just because I want to do some tapping. I would really right. make sure to do that during the day. But for me, I have this exercise that I make all my clients do is putting the day to rest. Mm -hmm. you know, that could be at any time. For me, I usually do that around five or six before I turn my computer off. I go through what do I have left? What didn't I do today? I have, you know, my little list here ready for mm -hmm. tomorrow. I put it down and then I do some tapping on any stress that I haven't released during the day. So that's yep. usually what I do. But then if you go to go to bed and you start to activate, then start tapping. But I would never say tap on, like don't get deep in your tapping. Mm -hmm. Really, a lot of the tapping that I will say it's external orienting tapping, making yourself aware of the room. There's no danger. There's no yeah. tiger running out of the woods right here. And just repeating the words right here, right now, I'm okay. I'm mm. safe. It's okay for me to go to sleep. There's nothing wrong with my bed. I don't have to worry about anything. I've put it on my paper, right? Letting your mind know that there's nothing that needs your attention. And then Really, in the evening routine, people will say, oh, I'll put my phone away. I won't watch TV, all this and that. I'm like, if playing on your phone, a game that calms you, that's okay. But mm -hmm. don't go watch the news. Right. Whatever activity you do, make it so that it's not one that will activate your nervous system. Make it one that will calm your nervous system. I, it's, it's funny you mentioned that things that are activating us at the end of the day. This is, I was living in Baltimore. So it's more than, well, I remember the apartment I was living in. So this was close <laughs> to 15 years ago. And I, it was, it was a Saturday afternoon and I watched, like I was watching here in the States, a station that basically 70% of their programming is just running the different versions of law and order. And I had watched three episodes of law and order in a row. And the beginning of the fourth one, there's another grisly murder. And I'm like, what am I doing? Um, there's a, there is a, an American sports commentator by the name of Bill Monty Jones, who says, I don't do recreational sadness. And, and it was, and, but I, I just had this moment of like, Oh, like yeah. this isn't actually helping me in any way. And it was the middle of the day and it wasn't impacting my sleep, but I was yeah. recognizing like we go to stories because they're emotionally engaging. Yeah. Why am I going to a story that is making me feel horror and grossness about the world? And right. so, you know, at, at the, at the end of the day, you know, like for me, if typically if I watch TV late near the end of the day, I watch old poker tournaments because it's interesting to figure out what's going on, but I know that there's nothing inside of it. That's going to make me go Rawr! and like accidentally trigger something inside of the story. That's making me thinking about something that I don't want to be thinking about at the end of the day. Exactly. Yeah. That's the important thing. It's not about what you do in that last hour that you're awake. It's about is what you're doing calming or 
doing the opposite and activating your nervous system. And people don't get that. Like, I know I work with a lot of moms that are juggling work and kids and to do lists and activities. And they're like 1030 at night trying to do laundry and the dishes and everything. And I'm like, can that wait till tomorrow? Yeah. Right. And if no, okay, then do it. But really decide to prioritize your sleep. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of things, a lot of people don't prioritize their sleep. They'll say, oh, I'll, and there we go with the beliefs, right? I don't need that much sleep. Right. <laughs> You're not functioning, but I can, I can work on five hours and it's not enough. You know, there's no, they recommend seven and a half to eight, but really you have to go with how you feel. Mm -hmm. My husband only sleeps six hours and he feels perfect and he's fully energized. I need seven and a half. And I heard Gabby Bernstein one talk, talk about uh, she needs nine. I tried sleeping nine and my body didn't like that. It was too much right. sleep and I was sluggish. So really experiment with personalizing your sleep for you and prioritize it. Put it like I, okay, so this is an exception because it's you and it's this big thing. I'm usually in bed by now, even on the weekend. Right. Nine o'clock, I'm in bed, I'm up at five and I feel great. So why wouldn't I do it? But a lot of people will say, oh, on the weekend, be flexible. And you can. But, you know, your body is biologically wired for sleep. But it also, it goes through processes. The 24-hour circadian rhythm is there for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get out of bed, you've got to build your sleep drive. So that when you have enough sleep drive, it knows to let the melatonin out so you fall asleep. You know, and then you sleep your seven, eight hours. It kind of clears all the guck. And then you start again. But you need to have that consistent schedule in order for your body to have the best quality sleep it can have. And I can see inside of that, you know, these these beliefs about sleep and prioritizing ourselves and those sorts of things mm -hmm. like I could see that being a huge tapping issue that yeah. like doesn't feel like it's about sleep, but it's about sleep. Like, mm -hmm. you know, those those of us who are natural helpers are notoriously good at putting ourselves last. Because yeah. we recognize the problems of the people around us. And, you know, it's the old dumb, put on your oxygen mask before you put on the mask next year. Yeah. And like, we all hear it so many times. It feels like a dumb cliche that we don't want to hear it anymore. We step into it in that particular way. Um, but being in a circumstance where we're able to, you know, just really give ourselves permission mm -hmm. to being able to go, yes, this is something that I am. It is valuable. And I'm worthy of claiming that particular value because those are two different things. One is acknowledging, okay, I can't just go on this cultural story or the story that I tell, oh, I don't need much sleep. I can push through it. I'm yeah. tough. That's one story. But the other is saying, once we recognize it's there, giving ourselves permission to recognize that I am worth allowing myself to sleep enough to do this in a helpful, exactly. thoughtful way. Yeah. And a lot of people don't. So let's talk about valuing your sleep. I did a YouTube video once on uh, learning to value our sleep. And I had such a, I had two responses because you have the clients who value their sleep, yet they can't have it. Yeah. Right? Their body won't let them. And then someone else sent a message and said, well, I value my sleep and I can't have it. But then the other person that I was working with, she didn't value her sleep at all. Right. Right. Therefore she didn't put herself to bed at night because she didn't think sleep was important enough. Yeah, And it, she wanted help with her sleep, but she didn't value her sleep. So we first had to get her to start valuing sleep, yeah. how important it is, why you need it, you know, do the education on the sleep cycles and the REM sleep and what happens during all those things while you're sleeping and why it's important before she could start valuing her sleep and then start prioritizing it. And, 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 it's, and, right? it's, and as you say that, like, I would be willing to bet people who are struggling to value sleep are people who are like, don't talk to me until I have my first cup of coffee in the morning. And they really value that cup of coffee in the morning as a way to start, which is like, that's awesome. Like, I, I, I love a tasty cup of coffee. Like, years and years ago, I was drinking coffee um, with milk and sugar in it. And I was like, do I actually like coffee or is this just a, a milk and sugar delivery system? Yeah. And I discovered I actually like coffee. Like that's, that's something, but, but being in a circumstance, like my day doesn't start unless I do this and we value, we value that, but we don't value the eight hours that went before it where we think right. we need to be doing something about it. Yeah. That's, that's big for people who don't prioritize their sleep and they don't value it. So you got to get there first, but when they do value it and they can't fall asleep, 
I know I've been there. I wanted to sleep so bad. Yet, no matter what, it felt like no matter what I did, there was no way I was going to go to sleep. Yep. And so just just makes me think of a client. I had this client. She hadn't slept for like over 30 years. She reaches out to me and she's tried everything. And I'm like, you know what? Tapping's work for me. I work with people of 10 years, no sleep. I don't see why 30 would be different. Let's try it. Let's see. Like yep. no promises. Let's see. And she, I remember her showing up at the second session. Just it's not possible. This is never going to work for me. All the blocking beliefs, right? Yeah. It's not possible for me. Like I can't, I just, so we started just tapping on that. It's not possible. I'll yep. never be able to sleep. My body is so broken that there's no way sleep will come back. Well, it's been about nine months. She sleeps six solid hours every night. She no longer takes sleep medication. Her body pain is gone and she is now back into living a life for the first time in 30 years. She's got energy. Mm -hmm. And so just start using tapping. You know, like it worked for me, it worked for her, it works for a lot of people. Let's start regulating our nervous system. Let's start prioritizing ourselves. Let's decide what we want to do and what we don't want to do and take it. Say no, <laughs> say no to people. Put those healthy boundaries in your life. So really fixing our sleep is an inner job, right? We're not sleeping because we're trying to give so much to the outer world that we forget to give to ourselves. And when we start giving to ourselves and prioritizing ourselves and doing our self care, sleep always comes back because we and, regulated our nervous system. And and one of the things I think that's that's really important that you said inside of there is, you know, one of the beliefs you know that I have is that, you know, in order for transformation to happen, we have to transform the way we see ourselves mm -hmm. or the way we see the world or yeah. both. And what you're saying here is. I have to transform my belief that I am worthy of sleep or I am capable of sleep. Like it's really interesting when we take a statement that is descriptive and we turn it into identity, you yeah. know, you know, like it, we go from, I struggle sleeping to, I am a person who can't sleep. And once we start getting it locked into that particular way, and it just feels like a statement of fact, because if we look at the past number of weeks or months or years where we have not been really good sleepers, it feels like I'm a person who can't sleep. And, yeah. and, and being tricky about this is the experience I'm having versus this is a set state that I'm dealing with. And that's true for everything, not just sleep as we navigate. Exactly. All that. We do a lot of work or I do a lot of work with the identity belief, right? I'm a good sleeper. I'm a poor sleeper. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between them? If you ask a good sleeper what he does to go to bed, he'll look at you and go, what do you mean? <laughs> I go to bed. <laughs> and if you ask a poor sleeper, what do they do to go to bed? Oh my God, they take their melatonin. They stop work at a certain time. Right. They're on the computer in the other room. They have a hot bath. They have someone massage their feet. Like the list goes on and on and on when you're a poor sleeper. And so we get really caught up in needing to do, do, do. And yep. we, forget, we forget to just be. And so I always say, look at the good sleepers in your life and start mimicking what they do. Mm -hmm. Right? Because a good sleeper just goes to bed. Yeah. So what can we do to be that good sleeper? How can we start changing that identity belief in our mind? Okay. And so, so we've talked about downregulating the nervous system. We've yeah. talked about changing our value in the way that we approach sleep. What else is there that we can be doing to make it so that it is easier for us to get the natural rest that we deserve? Um, educating yourself on, on what happens during the night when you sleep. Mm -hmm. Right. Because a lot of us will wake up through the night. And once we wake up, then our mind starts playing. Oh, here we go again. I won't be able to fall asleep again. Or we start thinking of our to do list. Yeah. So some examples of when I say educate yourself. Did you know that everybody wakes up five to six times during the night? Everybody. Mm -hmm. We just don't know it because most yeah. of us barely notice. But as we go through the sleep cycles, it happens five to six times in the night. So that would be my first thing I tell people like start educate. We do a lot of sleep education in my work because they have to know these things so they can make it easier to change the belief. And then we start tapping on all this stuff. Um, so the tapping that I like to start with for most people is just thinking about going to bed tonight. Mm -hmm. What happens to you when you think about going to bed tonight?
And then I, I explain the five channels of expression of energy. So I work a lot with Nancy Forrester from the National EFT Training Institute here in Canada. She always talks about energy wants to be expressed in these five channels, the emotions, the body sensation, the thoughts and the belief, the actions we do, and then the imagery. So I really get people to start thinking, okay, when I think about going to sleep, what's my emotion about it? Mm -hmm. Tap on that. Do you feel that anywhere in your body? Tap on that. Then, you know, what's the thought or beliefs? Tap on that. Let's start changing those. And what are the actions that you're doing or not doing in order to get your sleep? So really get into that schedule. So it's really looking at all of those as a holistic approach to get your sleep back on track. And it really depends on the person that shows up. Mm -hmm. um, everybody needs something different. Okay. So with that being said, we are all special little snowflakes when it comes to our approach to sleep. Um, would it be possible, you know, particularly for those who are in North America, we're closing in on nine o'clock here on the East coast. It's probably closing in on 10 o'clock where you are out in the middle of the ocean in Canada. Um, could you lead us through some of the tapping in a, in a general way? Because obviously we have a couple yeah. hundred people on the line. We can't figure out all of the little niggly things in those five things. But what would be a good place for us to start with all of this? And so what I, and I was thinking of that, like how to show people how to tap yep. for their sleep. So if we actually took those five channels of expression and we did yep. a round on each of them. That would be really, I, really perfect. Yeah. Right. And I'll give examples of what people would say, typically say. And I always like to end with a last round, just saying right here, right now, I'm okay. Right here, right now, I'm safe. And then that really solidifies that it's okay to go to sleep. And, and so as we do this, if you could do me a favor with each of those five steps, maybe while we're tapping on the side of the hand, just go through those five energies again, just to kind yeah. of refresh people who are, aren't familiar in thinking of those particular five terms, then we'll tap on each one of them one at a time. Yeah, we'll do. And so I just want people to imagine going to bed tonight, right? So when, when you're thinking about going to bed tonight, um, what is the emotion that you're feeling? So we'll do the first one. So what's that emotion? So when you think about going, not going to bed, but the next time we go to bed, that's it's it's fine. Like I'm going to push through. Yeah, don't don't worry about me. Take care of everybody else right now. Yeah. So what is that emotion when you think about going to bed? So people will sometimes say the dread, right? I dread going to bed, or I have a fear that I won't sleep, or anxiety starts showing up because. Mm -hmm you know, the anxious that I might not sleep. And so just taking that emotion and we just tap. So even though even I though, dread going to bed tonight, even though I dread going to bed tonight, right here, right now, I'm okay. Right here, right now, I'm okay. And even though, and even though I have all this anxiety thinking about going to bed tonight, I have all this anxiety about thinking of going to bed tonight, right here, right now, I'm safe. Right here, right now, I am safe. And even though. And even though. This fear is showing up just thinking of going to bed. This fear is showing up just thinking of going to bed. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I'm going to do the best that I can. I'm going to do the best that I can. And usually I would only do one emotion at a time. I'm just kind of putting them all of in course. there. Yeah. Yep. So, all right. So this fear about going to bed. This fear about going to bed. Yeah. This anxiety showing up. This anxiety that is showing up. All this dread. All this dread. Just thinking about going to bed tonight. Just thinking about going to bed tonight. Knowing that I most likely won't sleep. Knowing that I most likely won't sleep. All this dread. All this dread. All this anxiety. All this anxiety. And panic. A lot of people have panic. Thinking. All this panic. And then we can do another round thinking the body sensation. What happens mm -hmm. to your body when you think of going to bed? You know, some people get a pit of the stomach feeling, the butterfly feeling, that anxious feeling that shows up in the chest, you know, the, the tightness in the back of the neck. It could be anything. So whatever is showing up for people. So even though. Even though. I have all this tension in the back of my neck. I have all of this tension in the back of my neck. Just thinking about going to bed. Just thinking about going to bed. Knowing that I'm not going to be able to sleep. Knowing that I'm not going to be able to go to sleep. Right here, right now, I'm okay. Right here, right now, I'm okay. And even though. And even though. I feel it in the pit of my stomach. 
I can feel it in the pit of my stomach. Knowing that I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. Knowing that I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. Right here, right now, I'm safe. Right here, right now, I'm safe. And even though. And even though. I can feel it in my body. I can feel it in my body. All this tension. All this tension. Because I might not be able to sleep tonight. Because I might not be able to sleep tonight. And that's okay. And that's okay. Oh, this tension in my body. All this tension in my body. Yeah, this tension in the back of my neck. All this tension in the back of my neck. Yeah. Feeling in the pit of my stomach. Feeling in the pit of my stomach. Mm. Feeling it in my chest. Feeling in my chest. All this tightness in my chest. All this tightness in my chest. Just thinking about going to bed tonight. I'm thinking of going to bed tonight. And the possibility that I won't sleep. And the possibility I won't sleep. All this tension. All this tension. Yeah. So now let's go to the mind. So what is mm -hmm. your mind actually telling you when you think about going to bed? <laughs> right? So some people will have things like, oh, here I go again, or this is going to be another horrible night, or whatever it is that your mind is actually telling you about the possibility of your sleeping. Yeah. So even though. Even though. My mind doesn't believe that I'll be able to sleep tonight. My mind doesn't believe I'll be able to sleep tonight. It says, yeah, right. It says, yeah, right. Here we go again. Here we go again. Why do you even bother trying? Why do you even bother trying? Yeah, right here, right now, we're safe, though. Right here, right now, we're safe. And even though. And even though. I'm just thinking about going to bed tonight. I'm just thinking about going to bed tonight. My mind telling me, no way. And my mind telling me, no way. I'm not going to let you sleep tonight. I'm not going to let you sleep tonight. We've got to think of all those things we got to do. i got to think of all of those things i got to do. It's not possible for your body to fall asleep. It's not possible for my body to fall asleep. Right here, right now, we are safe. Right here, right now, we are safe. And even though... <laughs> I think I'm going to put you to sleep. <laughs> and even though... It's all good. <laughs> my mind won't let me sleep tonight. My mind won't let me sleep tonight. I wonder if it's possible... I wonder if it's possible yeah, to put all my worries on papers first to put all of my worries on paper first so that my mind will let me sleep so that my mind will let me sleep right. it might not be possible for me to sleep tonight it might not be possible for me to sleep tonight it might not be possible for me to sleep tonight it might not be possible for me to sleep tonight yeah, my mind might not let me sleep tonight my mind might not let me sleep tonight but i wonder if it's possible I wonder if it's possible for my mind to know for my mind to know that it is safe for me to go to sleep tonight, that it is safe for me to go to sleep tonight. It's okay for me to go to sleep. It's okay for me to go to sleep. It's safe in my bed. It's safe in my bed. Right? And we have two left. We have the imagery. So some people mm -hmm. are really strong in the image channel, which I am. I usually have an image pop up. And the funny one I had not not too long ago was like this, you know, the bam bam. Like if you ever watched the Flintstones, like boom, mm -hmm. boom, I'm not gonna let you sleep. That was my image that popped up when yeah. I was doing this. And so whatever image comes up for you, um, and you do the same thing. So even though, even though I have this image popping up, I have this image popping up, seeing myself laying in bed, seeing myself laying in bed. And being bang bang on the head. <laughs> and being bang bang on the head. Not able to sleep. Not able to sleep. Right here, right now, I'm okay. Right here, right now, I'm okay. And even though. And even though. I do have this image popping up. I do have this image popping up. Of me laying awake. Of me laying awake. Not able to sleep. Not able to sleep. Right here, right now, I'm okay. Right here, right now, I'm okay. And even though. And even though I have this image popping up, I have this image popping up. And like everybody put in what the image, I just, the only mm -hmm. image I have is that bang, bang, like whacking me on the head, not letting me sleep. You know, the image I have is like being twisted into a pretzel while laying there. Right. The opposite of relaxing. Yeah. So being twisted as a pretzel. Being twisted right. as a pretzel. Right here, right now, I'm okay. Right here, right now, I'm okay. It's okay for me to relax. Yeah, it's okay for me to relax. Being twisted like a pretzel. Being twisted like a pretzel. It's okay for me to untwist. 
It's okay for me to untwist. Being twisted like a pretzel. Being twisted like a pretzel. Being whacked on the head. Being whacked on the head. Unable to sleep. Unable to sleep. It's okay for me to go 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 to sleep. And then so the last one, it'd be like, what's the urge that you have or what are you trying to avoid? Yeah. Um, so the urge could be to lay there and let your mind run, mm -hmm. avoid going to bed. Uh, what's the image? What are you thinking of avoidance or urge that you would want to do when you can't sleep? Ask the question again. So as you're thinking about going to bed, what's mm -hmm. the, the behavior that you either want to do or not do? Gotcha. Yeah. So when I want to go to sleep, the thing that I do is I watch too much crap television. All right. So that's your escape as opposed yep. to going to sleep. All right. So yep. even, even though, even though I just want to stay awake and watch TV, I just want to stay awake and watch TV because I know I'm not going to be able to sleep anyway, because I know I'm not going to be able to sleep anyway. That's okay. That's okay. Right here, right now. I'm okay. Right here, right now. I'm okay. It's safe for me to turn off the TV. It's safe for me to turn off the TV. And even though. And even though. All I want to do is watch the crap television. All I want to do is watch that crap television. Because I know it's going to distract me from the lack of sleep. Because I know it's going to distract me from the lack of sleep. I can hear, I can see you coming up with things. What are you noticing or thinking? as? Oh, I'm just, just thinking about that, that exact thing. Like yeah. those times where it's just like, you know, oh, I'm just going to watch three more minutes. And the next thing I know it's 45 minutes later. And yeah. Yeah. Just staying up to watch TV. Just staying up to watch TV. Distracting myself from my lack of sleep. Distracting myself from my lack of sleep. Right. I just want to stay up and watch TV. Just want to stay up and watch TV. I want to avoid going to bed. And I want to avoid going to bed. Yeah, because I know I'm not going to sleep anyway. I know I'm not going to sleep anyway. So I want to stay up and watch TV. So I want to stay up and watch TV. I want to stay up and watch TV. I want to stay up and watch TV. Mm -hmm. But it's okay for me to go to sleep. But it's okay for me to go to sleep. Yeah, it's safe for me to go to sleep. It's safe for me to go to sleep. All right, so we're going to do one last round. And what would you say on the things that it's okay for you to go to sleep? I always like to just say right here, right now, I'm safe. It's okay to yep, go to gotcha, sleep. Gotcha, yeah. My body's yeah. allowed to sleep. Yeah, my body's allowed to sleep. Yeah. It is safe for me to sleep. Yeah, it's safe for me to sleep. It's for my higher good to sleep. It's for my higher good to sleep. My day tomorrow will be better if I sleep. Right. My day tomorrow will be better if I sleep. I will be healthier if I get good sleep. I will be healthier if I get good sleep. I have permission to sleep well. Mm -hmm. I have permission to sleep well. I deserve I, good sleep too. I am worthy of good sleep. Oh, I can feel myself like just wanting to sink in my bed. Yeah. And having that vision, that visual now, because I'm a visual person. So I'm having the visual of just sliding underneath my blankets and bringing the blanket up and just lulling myself to sleep. And now everybody is going to be extremely disappointed when I sign off and I go to bed right now and, yeah, and, and no. skip the next 12 hours of what we're doing here. And that's not going to happen. And like, oh. like I wouldn't do all of five in a right. row like this, right? We would take one, we would take the other. We might yeah. not do all five. I just wanted to yep. give an example of what those things could look like. Uh, absolutely. And, 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 I, and, I, and, and I think the, the, the question that I get the most when people are like, should I do this or should I do that? Like the answer that I always give is, how is it working for you? Like as, as a teacher, I describe things descriptively, what I do and how I think about them. I am not describing them prescriptively. This is how you're supposed to do it because I want you to be in a circumstance to understand how I'm thinking and why I'm thinking that way and then find the piece that was most useful. And I love the fact that you have this buffet of five things plus the little tail ender to seal it up at the end of all of that that's going to give people 
what they've just experienced right now or when they get a chance to go back and watch this replay to go through those five again and go, ooh, this one's really useful. And the thing that's important for us to recognize is this is the one that's really useful at this moment in time yeah. where three days from now, a week from now, next month, I might need to not do number one, but new number three of that little collection of what we were doing. And so it's important for us to be able to recognize what is what's working for me today. Exactly. And knowing that tomorrow it might be something a little different. The next day it might be a little different because, you know, sleep is one of those things that it's like we might have a primary thing that is impacting the quality of our sleep. But the reality is there are lots of things like you just documented in your own life, you know, your own experience. Well, I was doing this wrong and I was doing this in the way and this was making it harder and this was making it harder. And as we are in different seasons, you know, when I'm in a circumstance where I have a deadline, like leading up to this particular week, I was drinking more coffee later in the day as I was trying to do it. And like, it was to be focused. And so this week was out of whack in a way that normally isn't yeah. just because, you know, me and my team wanted this to be as spectacular as possible. And, you know, yeah, that, that was, you know, first time doing this, lots of stress. So those, and so, if I have sleep issues next week, it's going to be a different cocktail of reasons than what is going on now. And so that's the reason why I love the, the buffet of options that you're putting forward in this makes it really, really easy to be able to find something that is useful for us. Yeah. And, and there's really no one size fits all to fix our sleep. We really have to look at what's going in our life and it's okay to have bad sleep. Like we should, nobody sleeps a hundred percent all the time, right? We yep. sleep I have bad night sleeps, but now I know how to get back to sleep when I do. And the other thing is, is also is that, you know, it, it's one of those things that like, even the things like sleep are habitual things, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and there is like, like, as I think about my own sleep, like the number of nights as an adult that I've climbed into bed and then gotten back out of bed because I had to brush my teeth first before I go to bed because, you know, I had this very, very clear ritual, you know, it was eight 30, you brush your teeth, you go to bed. And my parents did a really, really good job of positioning to be in that particular position. But like what sleep looks like is ritualistic as well. And so if we are trending in a direction of it being something that is good and healthy and natural as we do it in a, a long-term way, then we're more likely to one bounce back when it goes sideways and two less likely to have those things go wrong. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. <sighs> well, very good. You know, uh, uh, other than the fact that I'm going to have to get up and do some jumping jacks to ensure <laughs> that, that I'm awake for, for the next conversation that I'm about to have. That was absolutely perfect. Um, I, yeah. I really love that. That super thoughtful conversation. So Carol, yeah. thank you very much for sharing all of that with us. You're welcome. Like it's so possible for people to fix their sleep if they know what to do. I didn't know mm -hmm. what to do back then. So that's why I want to help people know how they can regulate their nervous system and get themselves back to sleep. You know? Yeah. And, and just because of the conversations that you and I have had over the course of the last couple of years, I know that this is not something like, Hey, this is something I can be helpful with. I know like how much this burns in your marrow to be helpful yes. for people. Like this is, this is something that's a real passion for you. So I, mm -hmm. I really appreciate you sharing your passion. Well, thank you for having me here so I can share it with everybody. I appreciate it. Awesome. Well, we've kept you up past your bedtime. You can now <laughs> go to bed. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Carol.